Welcome to the viewers. In the last two lectures, namely lecture number 131 and 132, we have discussed some basics regarding types of beams, types of loads, etc. And in lecture number 132, we have discussed two cases of simply supported beams. So, finding out the bending moment and the shear force and drawing the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for simply supported beams. We have covered point loads, UDL and also UVL. So we have discussed uh, these basics. With these basics, uh, we will discuss some standard cases. Standard, uh, standard cases. So we are going to discuss bending moment and shear force diagram for standard cases. Of course, now uh, for second year students, it will be asked as a problem, even though it is a standard case. But when you go to the higher semesters, these standard cases, you will have to remember and straight away uh, uh, use it in the problem. Now, what carries a full mark, this is a full question, will be having a credit of about one mark or half a mark later because this becomes the fundamental. These are the standard cases you have to remember. So right now, uh, how to derive the values of bending moment and shear force for standard cases? Same procedure because already we have discussed point loads, UDL and UVL. So now compared to that, this work will, will be simple. Still, we will discuss uh, some basic steps and uh, straight away go to the standard cases. And also, at the end of this, after this, we will take one problem on overhanging beam, standard cases and then one problem on overhanging beam. That is what you are going to discuss in the lecture, right. So this is about me, you will be knowing, therefore uh, no introduction is needed, right. Now uh, coming to standard cases, as I told, you will have to remember, if it is a simply support beam subject to a central concentrated load, you have to remember that the shear force in the left support is W by 2 or the right support is also W by 2. It is a, a bending moment diagram, this is the bending moment diagram whose maximum value is WL by 4 and variation is linear because it is subjected to point load. So these things namely RA equal to RB equal to W by 2 because of symmetry in the loading because with reference to center C, the part on the left hand side is a mirror reflection of the part on the right hand side that is L by 2, L by 2 simply supported, simply supported subjected to central load. Therefore, reaction at both ends will be W by 2, RA equal to RB equal to W by 2 because of symmetry in the structure and the loading. And now coming to the shear force, we know when we take a section here in between A and the C, we know shear force is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces considered either to the right of the section or to the left of the section. Considering the loads to the left of the section, we have only Ra which is equal to W by 2. Therefore, the shear force at this section is equal to simply W by 2 or Fx equal to W by 2. Right. Come, considering a section to the right of the load beyond the mid span, here also the shear force is equal to Ra minus W, Ra minus W, Ra is W by 2 minus W equal to minus W by 2. So that is why and uh, here it is uh, subjected to a point load therefore the variation is constant. So W by 2 horizontal then w, w down, W down means W by 2 again W by 2, W down here that is a yeah, concentrated load W. So W by 2 already we have calculated also minus W, w by 2 and from here to here there is no loading and here we have RB upwards so W by 2 that is the shear force diagram this is the positive shear force this is a negative shear force right. Now coming to the bending moment bending moment at section XX we know MX equal to RA into X RA is W by 2 into X. So this is to show that the variation will be linear. This is independent of x shear force whereas bending moment uh, equation has got x. 
power of x is 1. So x is the variable. Therefore, we will have linear variation because the power of x is 1. So when x equal to 0, ma equal to 0. When x equal to L by 2, the minimum of the center is equal to WL by 2 into x equal to L by 2, that is WL by 4. This is one standard case. This now this may be asked as a part of the problem, second year level, but uh, higher semesters you have to remember these are all standard values. Throughout it will be useful. Throughout the career it will be useful. Interviews, competitive examinations, etc. It will be asked as a question and straight away you must be able to answer. Right. Now next is that of uniformly distributed load over the entire span. So reaction equal to total load by 2. Total load, this is W per meter run acting over length equal to L. Therefore total load equal to W into L. W per meter run into L may be 5 meters or 6 meters or 7 meters. So W into L is the total load. Now again it is a symmetrical structure subject to symmetrical loading. Entire span is loaded. Therefore the reaction at the left support uh, the reaction at the right support is total load by 2. Total load is W into L. So, reaction equal to WL by 2. WL by 2. Therefore, the shear force diagram, uh, here it is WL by 2 up, left up. Left up, right. Now, at any section XX, let us consider a section XX, the shear force at this section equal to, that is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces considered to the left of the section. There is one reaction whose value is WL by 2, WL by 2 minus W is a UDL, W per meter run. We have considered a length equal to X. So W into X because X may be anything, W into X. Therefore, minus W into X is the total load between A and X, WX. So this equation is again to say that the shear force will have linear variation. Now here you have to substitute when x equal to 0 this term will vanish it is wl by 2 when x equal to 0 wl by 2 when x equal to l by 2 wl by 2 wl by 2 this will become 0 and when is x equal to l it is wl by 2 minus WL will be equal to minus WL by 2. Minus WL by 2 means we will be here. And plotting this RB, WL by 2 up, WL by 2. So we have to start at this point, horizontal line. From here we have to mark RA, WL by 2. And according to this equation, we have to calculate the value and we have to plot it with linear variation. And we will be stopped here. Here we have to mark the value of Rb, we have to close at the horizontal line because drawing the shear force diagram should not be a problem. Right, now coming to the bending moment. Bending moment. So bending moment at the section xx, xx equal to Ra into x, considering the forces only to the left of the section, Ra into x. Ra is WL by 2 into x minus the total load to the left of section xx is w per meter into x. So w into x that will be acting at its center namely x by 2. x by 2 is the distance between the section and the point at which w into x will be acting. So w into x into x by 2. So this all simplification will give you an equation w by 2 into lx minus x square. So x square indicates variable is x, the power of x is 2, so that indicates that the bending moment diagram is second degree variation, has got second degree variation. So WL by 2 in the LX minus x square, second degree variation. So here when you substitute x equal to 0, ma equal to 0, ma equal to 0, simply support any ma equal to 0. When you substitute x equal to L by 2, in this equation, x equal to L by 2. So, W by 2 into L into L by 2 minus L by 2 whole square. So, that is this equation. So, that is equal to WL square by 8. So, WL square by 8. Now, as I told earlier, I repeat, 
uh, WL square by 2 derivation will be a, may be given as a full problem. But afterwards, in the next higher semester, if a beam is subjected to UDL over the entire span, what is the maximum bending moment? Uh, what is the variation? Means you must be able to say the maximum bending moment is WL square by 8 as a simply supported beam. And uh, the variation is of second degree. Right. So, some two examples in a simply support beam. Next is that of a cantilever. A cantilever subjected to a point load at the free end. So, here the shear force, we have to go from the free end towards the fixed end. Consider X, section XX at the distance X from the free end towards the fixed end. Right. Shear force at the section X is, section XX is, to the right, we have got only W. W. That is the only force. So, the shear force diagram will be having a constant variant. No variation. It will be constant. W by 2. W here. W downwards. This is the horizontal line for the shear force diagram. W down. No variation up to A. Therefore, at A, the reaction will be W or A equal to W because this is the only support. Whatever is the load, the total load will be taken by this support. Therefore, R A equal to W. So, shear force is independent of X. Therefore, it is constant variation. It is a rectangle having W and W at the high ends. And uh, coming to the bending moment, Mx. Mx equal to, you have considered a section XX. Mx equal to W into x w into x so we have to remember one point that it is a cantilever so cantilever will be subjected to hogging moment tension will occur at the top so hogging moment means you have to introduce a sign minus w into x minus stands for hogging and x is w into x the moment due to w at the section x so w into the perpendicular distance W into X minus W into X. So, this is the equation. So, this indicates that the bending moment diagram has got a linear variation. Right. In this equation, when we substitute X equal to 0, MB equal to 0. So, here the bending moment is 0. When we substitute X equal to L, X equal to L, MA equal to minus W into L. W into L. So, it varies from 0 to WL, bending moment diagram is negative, the variation is linear. So, that is, uh, next we will discuss one more case, namely, uh, a cantilever subjected to UDL over the entire span. So, reaction equal to W into L. The total load is W per meter and into length of the load is L. W into L is the total load. And this is the only support. So, this support will offer the entire reaction. So, W into L, the reaction RA equal to W into L. W into L is RA, that is the only support. Right. Now, coming to shear force, shear for, considering a section XX, at a distance X from the free end, we know shear force is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces. We consider the force from the free end towards the fixed end. So, shear force at the section X equal to W into X, W into X. This shows that the shear force diagram has got a linear variation. So, W into X. Now, in this equation, when we substitute X equal to 0, that is at the free end, because X is measured from B towards A. So, when X equal to 0, FB equal to 0. When X equal to L, FA equal to W into L. So, this is uh, write down is positive. Write down is positive as far as the shear force is concerned. Left up, write down is positive. Right. So, this is the section X. It is the load is down. Write down is positive. Therefore, the shear force diagram is positive. Right. Uh, coming to the bending moment, X, Mx, Mx equal to minus because it is hogging, hogging bending moment. So, at the section xx, bending mode the section xx equal to w per meter and 
we have considered only a length equal to x. So the load will be W and x. W and x will be acting at its center. So distance from the load to the section xx will be x by 2. Therefore, it is minus W into x into x by 2. x by 2, center of gravity of load to the section xx. Therefore, it is minus Wx square by 2. So this equation indicates that the curve will be a second, second degree what? Second degree curve. Therefore, when you substitute x equal to 0, mb equal to 0. When you substitute x equal to l, ma equal to minus wl square by 2. When you substitute x equal to l, it is minus wl square by 2. So, hugging bending moment, maximum ordinate is minus wl square by 2 at the fixed end and the variation is second degree variation. So, with this introduction, you will be able to derive the standard case here. Because when you go to higher semesters, as I told, this will be, this you are supposed to remember. You will not be permitted to do the calculation, you will not have time also. Right. Now, uh, it is a cantilever subject to point load. We know it is a rectangle WW, WL by 2, minus W by 2, linear variation. This one, this one, we have discussed. Similarly, for UDL, this is linear variation, 0 to WL. Second degree variation 0 to WL square by 2. Similarly, we can derive for uniformly varying load. Uniformly varying load already we have done one problem on simply support beam. So, the viewers know how to deal with a linearly varying load. On the same basis, if you continue, the shear force diagonal will be a second degree curve and the maximum shear force is WL by 2. WL by WL by 2 means it is a total load. Total load is half into L into W. That is WL by 2. Shear force bending moment diagram will be cubic. It will be a cubic curve. Uh, so every one of you knows how uh, why it is cubic, right? You can always derive the equation. So the maximum value is WL square by 2. The thing that I want to stress now is that you have to remember these values for standard cases. Similarly, coming to a cantilever with a moment at the free end, moment at the free end, there will be no shear force, there will be no shear force, only the bending moment diagram will have m here, m clockwise, and here the, at the support will have m anti-clockwise, so this is the bending moment diagram, shear force diagram will be zero, that is uh, uh, zero everywhere, right, this is bending moment. Simply support beam. We have discussed at the beginning. So, WL by, W by 2, W by 2, positive and negative and a, a linear variation. WL by 4 is the maximum bending moment at the center. WL square by 8. So, this also we have discussed. Uh, simply supporting with UDL over the entire span. So, WL by 2, WL by 2 having linear variation, shear force diagram. This is the bending moment diagram. Bending moment diagram uh, is a second degree variation parabola having a maximum ordinate of WL square by 8. Actually, uh, these values, uh, of course, it is given as capital W, but uh, coming to UDL, you'll have to mark all UDLs as small w. Small w only compared to this, it is only small w. Anyway, you have to be clear, small w and capital W. Now, here, we have given the title. This is the shear force diagram. This is the bending moment diagram. So. Uh, this we have discussed already. If it is a non-central load, non-central load, uh, the reaction at the left support will be WB by L, reaction at the right support will be WA by L. So having discussed uh, with a problem on a case with a number of loads, we can easily derive the value of RA. RA into L minus W into B equal to 0 or RA equal to WB by L, RB equal to WA by L. With this, we can draw the shear force diagram and depending on. So here, it is WB by L. Up to this, it will be constant. Here, it will come down. So W minus WB by L will be WA by L and you will have the shear force diagram. Bending moment at any section is equal to, here it is W B by L, the reaction is WB by L, WB by L into A equal to WAB by L, 
will AB by L is the maximum by W by L. You might forget, you can easily uh, recall. So, WB by L is the reaction into A. So, WAB by L plus. Uh, when it is subject to uniformly varying load, uh, same thing we have done. We have uh, done a problem on a simply support beam with the zero loading here, W here, it is reverse. The same problem we have done in the lecture, earlier lecture, second lecture, namely 132. We have derived this L by root 2, WL square by 9 by root 3, all these things. Of course, I have not given the value, I have just given M max. M max we can derive. Right. So we have, we have got the equation for M max. In the equation for M max, we have to substitute uh, uh, L by root 3. Actually, in the problem, it was 6 meters. Now, here it is uh, L. Uh, that is L by root 3. If you substitute L by root 3 in the equation for Mx, you will get this value. And uh, this is another standard case. These are all the case, cases to be remembered as a basic formula. Now, it will be given as a full problem. right? Now, uh, WL by 4, WL by 4. Because total load is half into L into W. Half into L into W. So, WL by 2. Half of that will be WL by 4. WL by 4, one reaction. WL by 4 is the reaction here. It is subjected to uniformly varying load. Therefore, the shear force diagram will have second degree variation. And the bending moment diagram will have a cubic variation. Third degree variation. And whose maximum value is WL square by 12. WL square by 12. These are the uh, standard cases. So, um, we have done uh, point loads, UDL, UVL. With this, you will be able to derive any of these equations. Any of these uh, equations. And uh, when you go to the higher semesters, you have to buy heart. That's all. And not only that, you will be using in different occasions in the field. When you are in a service, wherever you are, you, you have to remember these standard cases. Uh, another problem, I, as I told earlier, we are going to discuss one more problem on an overhanging beam. Overhanging beam. Coming to overhanging beam, we have a new term called point of contraflexure. In the case of overhanging beams, near the support, near the support, here the bending mode will be zero. Here the bending mode will be negative. negative. That is because of the load on the overhanging part. This will be subjected to hugging moment or negative moment. So at the support, you will have negative moment. Over the simply supported portion, you will have sagging moment. When it is subjected to downward load, you will have sagging moment. Right. Now, the sagging moment at one point, it will change sign from positive to negative. So where it changes from positive to negative is called the point of contraflexure. Point of contraflexure is that point at which bending moment changes sign from positive to negative. In some books they will give point of contraflexure is a point at which bending moment changes sign or bending moment is zero. That is correct. But because the bending moment is zero at the point of contraflexure, we should not assume that here also bending moment is zero. Uh, is it a point of contraflexure? It is not a point of contraflexure. No doubt. At the point of contraflexure, bending moment is zero, but the point to be noted here is bending moment changes from positive to negative. This is what is called a point of contraflexure. In the case of a beam with a double overhang, double overhang, here you will have a negative moment because of this cantilevering portion. Because of this cantilevering portion, you will have a negative moment. So at two points, it will change from positive to negative because in the distance between uh, these two supports, it will be subject to sagging moment. Uh, there will be a reduction in this moment because of this. Because of this. So, here uh, there will be two points of contraflexure. There is a point of contraflexure here, another point of contraflexure here. So, that is about point of contraflexure. So, a point of contraflexure or a point of inflection is a point at which the bending moment changes sign from positive to negative and vice versa. 
that is the bending moment at the point of contact flexure is zero but the, the short i told you should not mistake that because this is a point where the bending moment is zero should not assume that this is also a point of contact flexure right right that is that is about the point of contact flexure now we will take a numerical example and overhanging beam uh, a and b are supports over a distance equal to 10 meters 4 plus 2 plus 4 is 10 meters plus there is an overhang of uh, 2 meters length the overhang is subjected to a udl of 30 kilonewton per meter in the part a b there is an udl of there is an udl of 20 kilonewton per meter at the end of the udl there is one more constant load 60 kilonewton then after 2 meters, we have one more point load of 30 kN. This is the uh, problem. The problem may be given in terms of figure. They may give the figure, sketch the shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for the beam loaded as shown in figure. Or sometimes they will give, without giving the figure, they will give the text. So, one will have to practice for that also, to draw the beam and many beam and loading from the given wording that also is important right now here we know uh, you can find out the value of rb first because you take moment about a because moment at a equal to zero therefore straight away you can find out rb by taking moment about a right moment about a right therefore by taking moment about the support A, A, R B into 10, R B into 10, right, anti-clockwise is positive, sagging moment, R B into, R B into 10, R B into 10, minus 20 into 4 meters, 20 kilometer per meter, into 4 meters, so total load is 20 into 4, that will be acting at its center. We are taking moment about A, therefore 20 into 4 into 4 by 2 minus this point load 60 into 4 meters. All distances will not be referred to A because we are taking moments about A, You're right? 60 into 4 minus 30 into 2 plus 4, 6 meters up to the point A, 30 into 6 minus, minus 30 into 2, total load is 60. 13 to 2. We are taking moment about A. From A up to the center of gravity of that load will be 10 meters plus 2 by 2, namely 11 meters. So, 30 into 2 into 10 plus 2 by 2 equal to 0. If this is correct, your RA will be correct. Then by calculating, RA equal to 124 kN. It's only calculation. RA equal to 124 kN. Then RB, uh, this is RB, sorry, this is RB. RA equal to total load minus RB. Total load minus RB. Total load is 20 plus 4, 20 into 4 plus 60 plus 30 plus 30 into 2 is the total load. 20 into 4 plus 60 plus 30 plus 30 into 2 is the total load minus RB equal to RE. RA equal to 106. 106 kilonewton. It is about the reactions Ra and Rb. Right. Now, <coughs> shear force calculations. Now, I will not uh, uh, go from the uh, basic equation because we know uh, between the point loads between uh, Fa Fdl uh, uh, here, shear force diagram shear force diagram the shear force at the support A equal to Ra itself. F A equal to Ra, Ra equal to 106. F A equal to Ra equal to 106. And here there is a point load. So we will find out two values of shear force. One is just to the left of the section. Next is just to the right of the section. So just to the left of the section means we need not bother about the 60 kilonewton load. Just to write means that has to be accounted because in the shear force diagram, because of this constant load, there will be a sudden drop of 60. 
So just to the left, we have Ra and Udl. Ra is uh, 106. Ra is 106 minus there is an Udl. Just up to the left of D, there is a Udl 20 kilo Newton, kilo Newton per meter over a length of 4 meters. 20 into 4, 80. 20 into 4, 80. So the shear force at D just to the left equal to Ra 106 minus 20 into 4 that is equal to 26 kN. That is just to the left without considering the 60 kN load. Now the shear force at the point just to the right same section just to the left and just to the right Ra equal to Ra minus 20 into 4 minus that load concentrated load that is equal to minus 34. Therefore, in the shear force diagram, you find, you find that uh, uh, here it is 106. Here, because of UDL, we will have linear variation. Just to the left, it is 26. Just to the right, that is same point, it is minus 34. So, this variation you have to carefully note because of the point load 60 kN varies from plus 26 to minus 34, minus 34. So that is the shear force minus 34. Then next is that of R F E. F E equal to F E equal to R A minus 20 into 4, no extra. 20 into 4 minus 60 just to the left or here we can straight away take minus uh, at the section it is 30. So Ra, Ra minus 20 into 4 minus 60 minus 30 equal to minus 64. Only thing that we have to remember is Fe just to the left will be minus 34. Fe just to the right will be minus 64. This is a point to be noted, Sim simple point but very important point. Fd right here, Fd right just to the right and Fe just to the left will be the same because no load between, already you accounted 60, there is no load between D and E. So the shear force just to the right of D and the shear force just to the left of E will be the same. It will be a horizontal line only. Only at this point there will be a change. There will be a change. Uh, uh, if you got any confusion in this, you have to find out Fx. Fx and uh, that will be independent of x. You can understand. Right. So that is here the shear force diagram uh, is minus 34 already. At the point E there is a load of 30 therefore minus 64 minus 64 this horizontal portion you have to remember otherwise write down the equation for mx between these two points it will be independent of x you will understand that it is constant right 64 uh, actually the page number 7 and 8 are in to be interchanged uh, this is page number 6 actually this is supposed to be page number 7 and this is supposed to be page number 8. So this we have to interchange, right, no problem. And uh, that is 64. Then FB left, FB left, FB left means uh, here, FB left will be whatever is the shear force at E. There is no change between E and B, there is no loading. Therefore, whatever is the shear force here will be the same just to the left of B, left of B, just to the right of B, we have to add this shear force at E and RB or we can consider the load to the right and we can find out the shear force at B. Shear force at B is, this is the loading to the right of the, right of the section, that 30 kN per meter. So shear force is the algebraic sum of the vertical forces. So just to the right of B, we have 30 into 2. And uh, because it is UDL, we will have linear variation. So 30 into 
to rotate to or to linear variation. Here it is minus 64 up to minus 64 here. Now here the reaction is 124. 64 plus 60, 124. So that also can be marked and then this shear force diagram can be drawn because we know that Rb equal to 124 kilometer. 124 up you have to mark from here from here you have to mark 124 up and then draw the shear force diagram for the right hand side or you can come from this side also you have to connect these two because Rb is 124 up. So that is about the shear force diagram. I hope uh, uh, the viewers will be clear about the concept. Right. So next is that of bending moment. Bending moment uh, because of the interchange in the page number 7 and 8 uh, the bending moment calculations are here. Bending moment at A, MA equal to 0 because A is a simply support at the end. The bending moment at D equal to D equal to 20, Ra into 4 that is D is this point D is this point so considering all the forces to the left of the section Ra into 4 meters minus UDL 20 into 4 into 4 by 2 because we are taking moment about D only into 4 by 2 the distance between the point D and the center of gravity of this load is 2 meters so 20 into 4 into 4 by 2, Ra into 4, uh, this is the calculation, right, uh, Ra into 4 minus 20 into 4 into 4 by 2 is equal to 264 kilonewton meter, as I told, 106 kilonewton 4 meters, because some of the students used to struggle with the unit, uh, for, in simple terms you can understand, it is kilonewton, it is meter, bending moment is kilonewton meter. So between these two you have second degree variation already we have discussed otherwise once again we have to take a section xx and you have to write uh, equation as Ra in x minus 20 in x in x by 2 second degree variation therefore second degree curve we have to prove right. And next is that of Me, Me, uh, Me here is Ra into 4, Ra into 6, up to the point E, 6 meters, Ra into 6 minus 20 into 4, distance is 2 plus 4 by 2, we are, center of gravity of the road will be at 4 by 2, we are taking moment about the point E, so it is 2 plus 4 by 2, that is for the UDL, minus 60 into 2. 30 into 0. Therefore, therefore, coming to uh, this calculation, Me equal to Ra into 6 minus 20 into 4, 4 by 2 plus 2, this is very important, and minus the concentrated load into 2, 60 into 2, that is equal to 196 kilonewton meter. Mb equal to, Mb equal to, considering the load to the right, Considering the load to the right of the section here, B, we can also take moment from A that will be having number of terms. To simplify our calculations, we will consider the load to the right of the section. We know that at any section, whether we consider the load to the left of the section or right of the section, the numerical value will be the same. Sign also will be the same. Right? Now coming to this, uh, this is a cantilever, cantilevering part. Not exactly cantilever, overhanging part, you will have negative moment, hugging moment. Therefore, the bending moment here is 30 into 2 into 2 by 2. About B, 30 into 2 into 2 by 2. It is minus, minus. Uh, so, the value is minus. Right. Suppose, if there is any confusion, how it is minus, better you take bending moment from A, bending moment from A, or A into 10 meters, considering the forces only to the left of the section. Because when you consider right also, the algebraic sum will become 0. Right. So, or A into 10 minus 20 into 4 into oh, 4 by 2 plus 6 meters, 6 plus 2, 8 meters, minus 60 into 6, 
minus 30 into 4. You will automatically get negative sign. Minus, you will get the same value. So, therefore, it can be considered. Uh, of course, once if you practice a few problems, you will automatically come to this conclusion. And uh, in the overhanging part, the variation will be second degree because it is subjected to uniformly distributed load. So, uh, that with that information, this information, you can plot the bending moment, di bending moment diagram. From here to here, second degree variation. This is 264, this is 196, these values you have calculated. This is between the two supports. So, this is sagging positive and between the point loads you will have linear variation. 264, 196. There is no load in between, but the variation is linear. The variation is linear. That linear, we can understand by considering a section XX in between. If at all, if you got any confusion, take a section XX. Then the bending moment diagram will be, the bending moment equation will be Rea into X minus this UDL into this distance minus this in X, uh, I mean the point load namely 60 into X minus 4. That equation will be in terms of X. In that equation, if you substitute x equal to 4 meters, you will get this value. If you substitute x equal to 6 meters, you will get that, this value. So that uh, there will be no confusion. How it is linear? Means take a section xx as before, do the calculation systematically and one can easily understand. And uh, 196 and here it is minus 60, minus 60. All these are linear, linear variation, linear variation. And here it is UDL, therefore second degree variation. This is minus 60 kilonewton meter. So that is about getting the bending moment and plotting the bending moment diagram. One more important point is that of the calculation of point of contraflexure. Now, for getting the point of contraflexure, we know point of contraflexure is that point at which bending moment changes sign. From the bending moment diagram, we know bending moment changes between E and B, changes from positive to negative. So we have to find out at what point the point of contraflexure occurs. For that, we consider any section XX, a section XX anywhere between E and B, E and B. Uh, here, we have to take a section XX. For the section XX, let us take moment R A in the X, R A into X minus this U D L 20 into 4 into 4 by 2, 4 by 2 is from here to here it is 4 by 2. We have considered a section X at a distance X from the support A. So the distance up to the section X is X minus 2 meters. Then 60 into 60 into x minus 4 meters. x minus, I think there is no separate diagram for that. No, not wrong. Right. So, x minus, so we have to consider a section xx somewhere in between. The distance is x from a. So, if you take this load, since this is 6 meters, the distance up to the section xx equal to x minus 6 meters. For this, it is x minus 4 meters. Of course, once if a section is marked here and x is measured from here, you will understand this point. Uh, here I have not given the figure, but I have given the terms, namely uh, uh, Rea in the x, x is measured from A, Rea in the x minus 20 into 4 into x minus 2 minus 60 into x minus 4 minus 30 into x minus 6. So this is the general equation. This is after simplification. After simplification you get mx equal to minus 64x plus 580 after all uh, simplifying all these things. 680. At the point of contraflexure we know m equal to 0. Many moment changes sign from positive to negative. Therefore minus 64x plus 580 equal to 0 at the point of contraflexure. So that gives x equal to 
9.0625 meter. So point of contour fracture occurs at 9.0625 meters from the support A. That is uh, uh, this x equal to this x. Uh, the value of x equal to 9.0625. That is 4 meters plus 2 meters, 6 meters plus 2, 8 meters and uh, 9.0625. 9.0625 is the uh, distance, point of contour fracture. Point of contour fracture, this is the st standard procedure. There is one more way of doing the calculation. As I told you, these calculations will be repeatedly required at the various occasions. Right now, here it is straight line. We know that this is straight line. This point of contour fracture can also be located in a different way. That is, here it is 196, here it is 60. The distance EB equal to 4 meters. 4, 4 meters. Uh, yes, uh, uh, between E and B it is 4 meters. 4 meters. Right. Now, here you know the ordinate the point E, you know the ordinate the point B. And distance is 4 meters. So let us consider this distance, the alternate way of calculating the point of contour fracture. 196, let us consider this as x. So that this will be 4 minus x. 4 minus x. So 196 by x equal to 60 by 4 minus x. Or 196 by 60 equal to x by 4 minus x. So using this we can calculate the value of x. x equal to 3.0625. x is 3.0625 from the point E. From the point A it is 6 plus 3.0625 equal to 9.0625 meters from. So this is alternate way of finding out the uh, point of contraflexion. So uh, that completes one problem on an overhanging beam. So this completes uh, lecture number 133. Uh, thank you all. The, thank you for your patience. I thank all the uh, viewers. Right? Thank you.